Good evening, I'm Madison Carmouche. Many folks throughout the region gathered at the Mountain Arts Center in Prestonsburg to for a formal celebration of those who impact the area. WYMT's Jack Demler has more from the second SOAR Gala. A celebration of those who make Appalachia what it is today. There's a lot of great people doing amazing things that deserve a lot of recognition, and so that's what we're here to do tonight. People like Allison Sloan, someone who teaches kids with special needs at Rowan County Senior High School. Teaching found me. I've always wanted to be a teacher. Nothing else ever, you know, sparked in my mind to, to even consider any other profession. I've been a teacher for 24 years, and I can't imagine doing anything else. Sloan's work in the field of education led her to being recognized at the second SOAR Gala, an event that celebrates the people who dedicate themselves to shaping the future of the region. And of course, going into teaching, you never dream of winning awards to be a teacher. Um, so it was very much a surprise. It was very much an honor. Winning the Teacher of the Year, an award Sloan says is for more than just her. So I think to be recognized as a teacher just shows the world that we're still here. Uh, we're still going to do our job. We're still doing what we're supposed to do and that we love this. And it just goes to show that this honor is not just for me. I think it's an honor for all teachers across the state of Kentucky. Sloan is just one of the many people who received an award for her dedication to bettering Appalachia in an event designed to promote everyone involved in shaping the future. Is to make sure that we're showing the good things that are happening, that it isn't all doom and gloom. Um, and there's a lot of people out there every single day that are working really, really hard at, 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 at putting things together. Celebrating those who continue to leave their mark on the mountains. In Prestonsburg, Jack Demler, WIMT Mountain News. Overall, we had a pretty nice day of weather across southern and eastern Kentucky. Had a few showers earlier, but we have dried up since then. And for tonight, we're expecting mainly dry conditions. Let's take a look outside WYMT studio right now. We are down to 64 degrees under partly cloudy skies. May see a little bit fog, a little bit of fog uh, forming in the valleys here in the next few hours. And besides that, not much to talk about in the world of weather tonight. We're going to be seeing mild temperatures and overall pretty nice conditions. Satellite and radar shows a few of those passing clouds. The rain showers we had earlier quickly dissipated right before sunset and we will continue to see dry conditions through the overnight. Current temperatures 64 in London Hazard, 70 in the Somerset, 68 Middlesbrough, 63 into Wise, 68 over into Logan. Quick look at the first alert weather app forecast. You can always find that by scanning that QR code at the top of your screen and downloading the app showing we're going into the upper 50s overnight with mainly clear conditions and tomorrow we're heading into the 80s by the afternoon and that's going to be a stretch of some warmer weather for the next several days. We'll talk about that here in a few minutes, Madison. All right, Shane, thank you. The Middlesboro Police Department began a death investigation after a man was found unresponsive on 15th Street. The Bell County Deputy Coroner along with the coroner pronounced the man dead. The man was identified as 45 year old John Robert Futson of the Straight Creek community in Pineville. His body was sent to the state medical examiner's office for an autopsy. Friends and family gathered at the Callaham Funeral Home to celebrate the life of a beloved sports personality. Teddy Painter died last Saturday and his funeral was hosted today. A longtime sports reporter, some of his friends reflected on his career working in the sports field, doing what he loved. And I sent him some stats and uh, he, he put it all in words for me and sent it back to me. I printed it that Sunday in the paper and my boss hard at me Monday. He said, son, I said, how'd you write such a great story being a rookie like that? And I just smiled and I said, well, I had a little bit of help. But he, he looked at me and said, Teddy helped you, didn't he? I said, yeah, thank God for Teddy. I said, yeah, Teddy helped me. And he said, that's great. That's the kind of person Teddy was. You call him any time, 3 o'clock in the morning, it didn't matter. Teddy would be there for you. And I love him, and I miss him, and I thank God for him. And uh, rest in peace, brother. It's very rare that people wake up in the morning from their earliest to their, very, to their, to their going away. They got to do what they loved. 
and uh, he did. He loved he loved that. He loved sports. Painter was 68 years old. A Perry County organization came together to recognize the hard work of women in the community. The Hazard Perry County Women's Club is a civic organization dedicated to making this community a better place to live. Hazard Perry County Women's Club gave its Business Professional of the Year Award to Meriwether Wash Hall. Wash Hall is the president of Ad East Inc., which has been in business for more than 35 years. One Clay County farm has won the Invest 606 competition, winning $15,000. On Saturday, folks gathered at the Pennington in Corbin to cheer on 14 businesses in their journey giving their final pitch. Acres of Grace, based in Clay County, is operated by Amy and Lisa Bork, who grow their own food, raise animals, and make several baked goods. Amy and Lisa say it took a lot of work to win. Well, it was some really tough competition. Everybody that um, pitched today was amazing and had really great business, so we're pretty blessed. Yeah, yeah, um, it was it was a, a lot of work too on our part to get here. Yeah. Amy and Lisa say with the money, they hope to move out of their home kitchen and build a facility on their property to serve more people. Bluegrass Discovery Center of Laurel County won second place and ready set play of Hazard one third place. Hundreds gathered in downtown London to participate in the second annual Parkinson's in Motion 5K. Executive Director Jane Rice Williams says folks in the region are not aware of how the disease can impact you. She says with the help of volunteers, they are able to continue their mission of moving for change. You know, I've said all along that London, Kentucky knows more about Parkinson's than any community of its size. And the people in our community, the groups that I'm looking at right now that's hanging around, making sure everything is picked up, those are the volunteers that have been with us all year long preparing for this two hours today. Williams says it also could not be done without sponsors and people who signed up to race, saying they, continue, they hope to continue to grow the event each year. April is Autism Awareness and Acceptance Month. To celebrate, one autism therapy center is making a big change. Blue Sprig and its team of board-certified behavior analysts and registered behavior technicians use Applied Behavior Analysis, or ABA, to help kids with autism. Danielle Duff is the clinical director at Blue Sprig Lexington, and she says every child is different, so it's important to provide specialized care on their own timeline. We meet them where they are, so whatever their needs are, is that communication, social skills, uh, behavior, vocational skills, all the combination of all of those things um, so that we can get them the tools they need for whatever the world is that they're in. Blue Sprig has been providing care in Lexington for several years and on Saturday they opened their brand new facility. This new home will allow them to help more children in a space catered specifically to their needs. Kentucky is in the top 10 for in the country for serious medical problem, diabetes. According to the American Diabetes Association, an estimated 31,000 people are diagnosed with diabetes every year in Kentucky. Over 100,000 go undiagnosed. The Fayette County Diabetes Coalition held an event like holds events like the second annual Diabetes Expo to help provide Kentuckians with access to the proper resources. So we wanted a one-stop event that you can get all your needs resource-wise, education, screening-wise, and just answer some questions you may have as you are either maintaining diabetes or newly have a diagnosis or really trying to find preventative ways. Tragedy on Lake Cumberland this morning after a boat crash left one person dead and another injured. Jessica Umbro spoke with Fish and Wildlife about this popular recreation spot and how to stay safe while out on the water. You're just, uh, you're running things through your mind. You know, what, what's going on? You know, have we lost a life or do we have people that's badly injured? And 
uh, from that very moment until you get to the scene, you're trying to gather information. Sergeant Wayne Wilson with the Kentucky Department of Fish and Wildlife says as the summer months get closer, those looking to cool off at Lake Cumberland should be aware of safety hazards while out on the water. This time of year, if you're boating on Lake Cumberland, there's a lot of logs, a lot of trash floating, and uh, we would recommend slowing your speeds down. He says time of day is also important. In the accident that killed one person and left another injured, the lack of light at 1.30 a.m. made things more difficult. They were operating after dark, and that enhances the dangers. Uh, you can't see those things floating in the water. And in addition to slowing down, checking the clock and your speed on the water, there's a simple addition to your lake day gear that can prevent drowning deaths. In my personal boat, it's not an option. You, you wear your life jacket. And... There's accidents that happen that this wouldn't prevent a death, but there's accidents that happen where people's drowned, that if they'd had a life jacket on, that they would still be with us today. Jessica Umbro, WKYT. Sergeant Wilson says the person injured in Saturday morning's crash is in stable condition. Coming up at 11, the Kentucky Derby is just one week away, but festivities are already underway in Louisville. And the calendar is going to roll over to May here in a few days, but it's going to feel more like June, a summer style forecast when we return.